Hello everyone, my name is Adam Maripos Vox and welcome back to another OBS Tips tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to install third party software as I had a couple comments referencing that they thought they could not install third party software and that is, that can't be further from the truth as there's probably more third party software available safely for Linux than there is for Windows. You see here if I've opened up the Ubuntu Software Center, I've already installed Chromium, Clementine which is a media player, uh, Shotwell which is a photo viewer. And then if we click audio, there's audacity right there. And so I just click install, type in my password when it pops up and it will download and install audacity. And then I have audacity as an audio editor. And that's all it takes for stuff that is actually listed within the software center, which isn't everything that that's something to note is that obviously not everything can be in here. This is just stuff that's been verified for working with this version of Ubuntu. Now, if you're trying to install other software, for example, I was trying to install uh, OBS, you have to actually have a, they actually have to update it for the version of Ubuntu that you're on, unfortunately. So for example here, it's got support for 14.04 and 15.04, but they have not yet put out a 16.04 release. So I've already went ahead and added the repositories in command line, but they're ignoring it because there's no distribution or there's no releases for this current distribution of Ubuntu. So you just kind of got to wait until they add 16.04. It says 15.04 plus, but that just is meant to refer to 15.10, unfortunately. Um, as I added the repository, but if I go to sudo apt git install OBS studio, it can't find it. But there are, but a lot of programs, like if you, if you know what you're looking for, first you search in here. Now, Skype specifically, as my example, will be in here. No, it's not. Okay. So Skype isn't in this software list. So instead, what you just got to do is go to their website. I went to Skype. Go to Downloads. It automatically detects what operating system you're on. So it says Skype for Linux. Choose your distribution. Now, here it still lists um, older versions. Like, I don't know. Skype apparently has never updated, which doesn't surprise me since 2012. But um, you can choose the latest version for Ubuntu. And then it's just automatically you're going to download a .deb file or for Debian. Wait for that to download. And then that will just automatically open once you tell it to open in the software installer. And that's basically like an exe or MSI installer for Windows. As it just starts installing the software if you want it to. It's basically the same as Windows. If you click it, it's going to open it up here. Skype, wherever you are, wherever they are. That's kind of creepy. Install. It's going to give me trouble, of course. It's not going to tell me why, though. Waiting to install, and then it will install your software. And that's pretty much all it takes. So that's it for installing software. You use the software center, and then if a website gives you commands like the OBS project website does, we go back here to OBS project, choose Linux. It will tell you that you need... FFmpeg installed, which we already installed via the J downloader. But all you really have to do, like it, if it gives you these commands, and all you have to do is just copy them and paste them into the terminal. Now you're going to want to make sure that whatever program you're getting is from a safe source. Like you want to make sure it's someone you can trust or else you can install malware on your machine, just like Windows. But it's fairly straightforward. And when they give you the commands, you can literally just copy paste them. Now for the terminal, you can't use control V. You got to use control shift V but then it pastes it in there. But again, they have to, uh, Ubuntu 16.04 is a little bit more restricted, so you have to, you, you, you gotta wait for them to release a modern version. Now, if you want to do Windows programs, you're gonna need Wine or to run a VirtualBox of Windows using VirtualBox. Uh, I don't think Wine, Wine should show up. Configure Wine, yes. So, so if you want to use Wine, which is a Windows emulator, Go ahead and install Configure Wine and then Wine Tricks. Wait for those to install. And actually, if we go ahead and search for Wine, yeah, we don't have it yet. Okay, wait for these to go. And it will let you open up EXEs just like you would on Windows. Now, granted, not everything's compatible. You can't just run Windows programs as if you're running Windows because you're not running Windows. But that's essentially the gist of it. So if 
find the programs you like from the software center and then search for the other ones and most of the installation process is fairly straightforward. If you have any questions or other tutorial suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. Ooh, I forgot about this. Griffin, Griffith Movie Manager it lets you keep track of your movies and stuff. I used to use that a lot. Um, CD burners, video editors, audio editors. Audacity works just like it does on Windows, so I'll open it up here real quick just to show you. It even has the annoying welcome screen, but here, see? Looks just like it does on Windows. This is a test. Test, test. There you go. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Check the playlist link in the description below for more Ubuntu-related videos, and I will see you next time.